Hello and welcome to a Vector Tuts Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham. Today we're going to talk about blends, specifically replacing the spine in multi-step blends. Let's say you want to draw the European Union flag. It's 12 stars in a circle, and rather than sort of figure out mathematically where each star should go, you can do this with a blend. First, take the star tool and draw a star. Hold down the shift and option keys to constrain it to a perfect five point star. Then option drag to create a copy. Hold down the shift key as you drag to keep the copy horizontally aligned to the original. Now go to the blend tool and double click to bring up the blend options. Since we want individual stars, choose specified steps as the spacing. I've entered 10 steps, which will give us a total of 12 stars, which includes the first two. Now you can either use the blend tool to create the blend or go up to the object menu and choose blend make. And now there are our 12 stars. I want to put them around a circle now, so I'll grab the circle I've already drawn, select both it and the blend, then go to Object, Blend, Replace Spine. Well, that's not exactly what we're going for. Of course, we want the stars evenly spaced around the circle. And here's a quirky thing. To get the stars to even out, you need to open the path, so take the scissors tool and cut it. I'm going to make my cut at the bottom point, and now you can see that the stars have distributed evenly. But here's another problem. We only have 11 stars. Where did the other one go? Well, at the point where I made the scissor cut, the two stars at either end of the blend have overlapped. And you can see that this is the case by expanding the blend. I'll select the star nearest my cut and move it to reveal another one underneath it. So I now know to make the blend with one extra step, in this case for a total of 13, so that when I cut the path and two stars overlap, I'll have 12 objects evenly distributed around the circle. Well, that's a practical use for the replace spine feature. Let's do something more fun. I've made a blend from a small circle going to a larger pink one, and I'm going to replace the spine with this spiral path. And you can see the big circle spiraling down to the small one. If you go up to Object Blend Reverse Spine, it reverses the direction of the path, and now you can see that it goes from the small circle to the big one. Here I've added a black stroke to my circles, and you can see that the larger one is on top and the other steps are stacked beneath it. If I choose Reverse Front to Back under the Blend menu, the stacking order is reversed. You can use any path as the spine. Here I've just made a scribble with the pencil tool, and when I apply the blend to it, I get some random circles. And as this is a live effect, I can double click on the blend tool, increase the number of steps, and end up with something that looks like a rope. Here I have a blend made from two unfilled circles that I've applied to an arc, and here it is in outline mode. Another thing you can do when the blend is still live, that is, before you've expanded it, is change the individual objects that make up the blend. So for example, I'm going to select just the larger circle and go up to the effects menu and choose pucker and bloat, and I'll turn on the preview button, and when I move the slider, you can see how it affects the overall blend. Lastly, I'm going to use that same blend and replace its spine with this spiral. As before, I'll increase the number of steps, and I get a sort of spirographic spiral. And if I reverse the spine, I end up with this lovely nautilus shape. It's fun to experiment, and the possibilities are endless.